Hello there folks and welcome to a relatively special unboxing. In this box, fresh off the boat from China, is something really unique. In some of the specialist hardware threads in the back doors of the internet, uh, they found a really cool APU that's on AliExpress. It's something that people are assuming is a cut down version of an Xbox One slapped onto a motherboard. At least that's what they think. Uh, you can actually find this on AliExpress. It's labeled as the AMD A9-9820 APU. It says it has 8 cores and Radeon R7 graphics, which means that if this is indeed a cut-down Xbox One APU, it, the 8 cores would make sense, and the R7 graphics, which would probably have around 512 stream processors rather than the 800 and however many that an Xbox has would make sense that it's a cut down Xbox APU. However, we're going to unbox it, take a look, and look at the actual specs. We're going to boot up uh, GPU-Z, CPU-Z, and see what's actually inside this. So, without further ado, let's get to the unboxing. All right, so let's take a look inside of the box. Inside of the box, we have the motherboard as we expect. So, let's take it out of its packaging, and this is the APU in question. As you can see, this is quite a lot larger than a regular APU. It m does look like the Xbox One um, die and substrate right here, plastered on to a relatively mundane looking motherboard. We have SATA up here, no 16x PCIe slot, just a small one down here. We have some USB front panel header, everything that you would expect on a normal motherboard. Here's the I.O., nothing to write home about. You have two PS2 ports, HDMI, USB 2, USB 3, Ethernet, and your audio jacks. The VRM is a little bit chonky for a cheap Chinese motherboard, so I would assume this pulls a decent amount of power. We have our regular 24-pin power here, and one more 4-pin power right here. The chipset does have a cooler. We have one CPU fan header here, and I believe that is about it. There might be one more system fan right here and an audio jack. But yeah, so we have room for one system fan and a CPU fan, so nothing special, nothing to write home about. However, looking at the die, one thing that I can tell, I'm gonna have to get a close-up shot for you guys, is that this was diffused at Global Foundries in Germany with a timestamp of 2014 on it, which does correspond to when they were making the Xbox One chips. So this may actually be a cut down version of an Xbox One chip. So we are going to plug this into our test bench, load up CPU-Z, GPU-Z, and try to dig in a little bit deeper to see what this particular motherboard and APU hold. But before we do that, we have one last thing. We have the panel header, don't really care about that. And then we have this, which I do care about. This is the CPU cooler and mounting bracket. Oops, I dropped it. So this is the mounting bracket, goes on the back side. And this is the cooler. It is a chunky and very heavy cooler. There's a lot of metal to this thing, so this should do an adequate job of cooling it. It looks like it is a proper 4-pin uh, PWM-controlled CPU fan, which is good. Also, I like the fact that it uses screws, which is very important when you're dealing with a delitted APU like that, because it's very easy to crack one of those, and with screws, you can provide even pressure as you screw down one corner, screw down another corner, screw down another corner, and another corner, and go from corner to corner to corner to corner, tightening it down as you go. So there we go. This is the cooler that we're going to use. That's the APU that we're going to mount it to, and let's get to it.
Alright, well we managed to get Windows installed on this and we're going to run Cinebench to see how fast the CPU is. Spoiler alert, it's probably not that fast. Anyhow, let's get to it, but while we do that, let's take a look at some of the more interesting things about this APU. First off, let's start with CPU-Z, and as you can see it has 8 cores and 8 logical threads. This specification is indeed an AMD A9-9820 processor. But more interestingly, it's an AMD K16 chip, which, if you're not familiar, is a Carrizo or a Cabini-based Jaguar core, which is exactly what we would expect to find in something that was uh, derived from, or actually might be, a cut-down Xbox One APU. So, everything is kind of jiving with what we thought, so far at least. So, let's take a look at GPU-Z and see what we can find there. And from what we're looking at for GPU-Z, the GPU name is Kryptos, which is really interesting because the Xbox One's codename, GPU, or APU, I should say, was Kryptos. So they're using the same codename for this particular APU as they used for the Xbox One. In fact, this might actually be a cut-down Xbox One APU, especially if it is a Kryptos APU. It's built off the 28 nanometer process, which is what we'd expect to find in an Xbox One APU. However, the raster operation pipelines, texture mapping units, and shaders are quite a bit less than what we'd expect to find. We only have 8, 24, and 384 respectively. The memory size can go up to 2 gigabytes, but you have to change that in the BIOS, and you can do that. I just haven't, because as we'll find later, it really doesn't pay with this thing. There's one other cool thing that we can take a look at in GPU-Z. If we take a look at the BIOS, we'll see that it is an AMD Kato. And if you look up those two words, you'll notice that there is one system integrator or electronics company that actually used this particular chip with this BIOS. However, they never actually sold it. That particular chip company is Chue. And the product that they were going to sell was called the Aerobox, which is an all-in-one gaming PC, kind of like a console. In fact, let's take a look at their website. And as you can see, it even says that it uses this particular APU inside of it. However, they never ended up selling it. And if we scroll down, you can actually see a visual representation of the board or what the system looks like on the inside. And you'll notice that it looks incredibly similar to the system that we have. In fact, I have a hunch that because they never actually sold these computers, what they probably did is they had a stock of motherboards and APUs that they had built up to use for these computers but never ended up using for them, so they parted them out and sold them on AliExpress, and that's probably how I got mine because I think my motherboard and APU are the exact same as what you would find in one of these. However, you can't buy one, you never could, and you can take a look at their website, it's still up, but um, that's about it. So let's take a look and see how we did for Cinebench. Well, 793 is nothing to write home about. In fact, for 8 cores, it's quite frankly pathetic, but we all know that the Xbox One APU was nothing to write home about either, especially in terms of CPU performance. I would test the graphical prowess of this APU, however, I can't actually find any drivers that work with this. I tried everything from the newest Adrenaline drivers to older Crimson drivers, even to the Catalyst Control Center, and I even tried their Pro drivers and everything I could get my hands on, and nothing would actually work with this. So I even went as far as to install Ubuntu and try to install some drivers that way, but it doesn't appear as though there's any drivers that actually work with this. I did manage to find on the internet a driver number that would theoretically work if I could find it. However, I can't find that driver number. I'll put it up on screen for you guys just so if you can manage to find it. I'd love to get my hands on it. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't look like we're going to be able to test the graphical power of this. It wouldn't be that great anyways, assuming we only have 384 stream processors, unless it's not reporting correctly because it doesn't have drivers. But 
I'm not sure that's the case. I think this is indeed a cut down GPU on here. So, well, there you go. The AMD A9 9820 APU. You can get it on Ally Express. Would I recommend it? Absolutely not, because there's no drivers for the darn graphics. So, well, there you go. If you have any more questions or information regarding this, feel free to let me know. But that will be it for this short little episode. I'll catch you guys next time.